Hello, Don Morris here, and I'm here to answer the question that a lot of you were left with the last video about the math behind the bends. What if the angle isn't 90 degrees? So to answer that question, we need to look at a few different things. If the angle is not 90 degrees, our mode point dimensions are altered and they're not just straight from one side to the other. Let's begin with this case. Up here, I've got a piece that's been bent approximately 135 degrees. Notice that we have our bend tangent lines where the bend meets the straight of the flat. And if we extend those bend tangent lines, we'll find the theoretical bend, uh, center point of the bend. Now, it's very tempting for us to look at this and say we've bent this about 45 degrees. That's what this angle is about over here. But that is not the true bend that we've made. In this case, we bend it approximately 135 degrees, this angle. And that's because we started straight, we bend it through 90, and then we bend it to 135 degrees. If you take a look down here, this one's been bent, oh, it looks like about 30 degrees. And you can see down here that our mold point dimension is very, very small. Here's our setback, just about here, with our bend tangent line and our mode point dimension. This is a very small setback, and this one is a very, very large setback. Now, this is kind of important because we want to be able to figure out how to modify this setback when we come over here. So I'm going to do some drawing up on the board. Let's say that this is the bending break or the radius call that I'm going to bend my piece of sheet metal over and I'm going to work my way across here. We're going to start by drawing in our piece of sheet metal. I've got it a little bit larger than we had over at the other side and once we develop this for one angle it should apply to every angle if we're careful how we develop it. So here once again is our piece of sheet metal and this is our BTL that is directly underneath the radius call. Across here, we're going to go ahead and extend these lines straight, and as we extend these lines straight, where they meet would be the mold point dimension. Mold point. Okay, our mold point dimension sits back over here, and our bend angle, our second bend tangent line, happens right across here. Now, I'm going to delete a few of these lines, erase a few of these lines to make this a little less cluttery, and you can kind of see a little more about what's going on. If I were to push across here and make a center, you can see two triangles. Now, this one looks like I drew it kind of poorly, so let's start over again. This one should actually come up to right about here, because these two triangles should be just mirror images of each other flipped about the axis. We need to label the bend that we've made, and we already talked about how this bend is not about 45 degrees. Instead, it's about 135 degrees. It's actually over here that we're going to read off the bend, and that's the bend between the angle between this black line and this black line right here, which goes to our other bend tangent line. This angle is the amount that we bent the uh, piece of material. But it's easier if we only label one of these, and I'm going to label this one half theta, theta representing our angle. Okay, that's the, that's the amount of bend right inside of this location. Now, if you watch the other video, which by the way you should, this is a follow-up video. If you watch the other video, you know that this distance, which was the old setback, is equal to the material thickness plus the bend radius. That's this distance right across here. And this distance is our non-90 degree setback from here to over here to our mold point. Now, knowing that this is our non-90 degree setback, what we can do is develop a formula. We have over here the fact that this is a right triangle this is a 90 degree angle, that means that our standard trig functions apply, and some of us remember, so ka toa tangent of a particular angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent 
And this holds true for any right triangle which we've drawn up here. Now in this case, our angle is a half theta because that's what we have across here. So substituting, I get tangent of one half of the bend angle, in this case we're going to call it theta, is equal to our opposite side from here, that is our setback, over our adjacent side, which is our material thickness plus our bend radius. So, material thickness plus bend radius. Now, I want setback by itself because that's what I'm trying to calculate. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that material thickness across here, rearranging my equation. I get setback equals tangent of one half of the angle that I bent the sheet metal to times the quantity material thickness plus bend radius. Now, you'll recall that for a 90 degree bend, we found that our setback I'm going to put 90 by there because this one's a non-90. Setback equals just material thickness plus bend radius. So we have this weird tangent of one-half theta that sticks in the front. Now, because traditionally mechanics haven't been very good at math necessarily, that's not their forte, the FAA has replaced this quantity, tangent of one-half theta, with something that they call K. So we're going to come across here, k equals tangent of one half of the angle that we're bending at. This gives us a new formula, which I'm going to write up here because I keep running out of room. Up in here, our new formula, going back to black, is setback, and this is for any angle, not just 90, equals k times material thickness plus bend radius, where k, once again, is tangent of one half of the angle. Now, I need to say a word of caution for those of you who are not trying to do aircraft aluminum. k, it turns out, and I think I mentioned this in the last video, k for most sheet metal bending turns out to be the distance from here to the neutral axis. But because the FAA is special, they have to use a different term for it. And for them, k is tangent of a half theta. So don't confuse the two of them. You're doing the same thing, but you've got slightly different names. Uh, now, k, you don't have to have tangent of a half theta to get that. You can look up k on a chart. And if you look up k on a chart, you can find this is the degree of your bend, and it comes over there and spits it out. That chart is just tangent of a half theta. So whichever way you want to get it, that's going to be just fine. But this is how we get the setback for a non-90 degree bend. The lucky thing is the rest of these are a lot easier. Okay. For this, we're going to once again draw a pretty similar diagram to what we've had before. Only I'm going to put it up like this because it's uh, more like what we drew last time. Here is our, angle that, or our circle that we're bending. And then we had a piece of sheet metal that came up, and it bent partially around the circle. Last time we bent 90 degrees around the circle. This time we're going to bend 45 degrees around the circle, but this could be any amount. There we are. Don't forget that we had a neutral axis in the middle of the sheet metal. And the distance to that, to the neutral axis, you remember, was equal to one half of the material thickness plus the bend radius. And so we found that the distance to go all the way around this circle was 2 pi times a half the material thickness plus the bend radius. And that goes all the way around the circle. Last time we just divided that by 4. And when we divided that by 4, it gave us a 90 degree bend. This time we're going to be a little smarter than that, and we're going to divide that by 360. And that's going to give us the distance that we sweep out per degree of bend. So all we're going to have to do to the end of this is then put times the number of degrees. And this formula is going to give us the answer to what is our bend allowance for a non-90 degree angle. Now, 
Once again, we're going to simplify this. We're going to not use one half the material thickness. We're going to use the actual amount. So when you spit the numbers out, it's not going to come out quite this way. But our formula is going to be equal to bend allowance equals 0 0.0078 times our material thickness plus 0 0.0148. 3 times our bend radius, close parentheses, times the number of degrees. And that formula we're going to come back and put over here because it's the other thing we need to know. Bend allowance equals parentheses 0 0.0078 material thickness plus 0 0.0143 bend radius times degrees. Notice that these are pretty small numbers and that's because it doesn't take very much to sweep around each one of these degrees. Now there's one more thing we know how to we need to know how to calculate before we can begin developing our flats. And that one additional thing we need to calculate is what is the sight line? Remember the sight line is how far away we're going to be able to see this thing and it is still the same whether it is not whether it's a 90 degree bend or not a 90 degree bend, our sight line will still be equal to 1 times the bend radius away from one of our BTLs. So that gives us all the formulas that we need to calculate this for non 90 degree bends. We're going to clip this video and you can watch the other videos to see some examples.